Hello Crime Scene Photography 1 students, welcome back to the virtual classroom. We're continuing on this week and this week we're going to be discussing vehicle examinations and as the title of this video indicates every surface counts. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So vehicles are a part of our everyday lives, right? Almost everyone has a vehicle or has access to a vehicle uh, one way or another. And because we have become so dependent on them for our everyday activities, it's really imperative that um, they are examined as part of a crime scene investigation. So it really doesn't matter what type of investigation you are conducting, whether it's a homicide, uh, rape, assault, burglary, robbery, a vehicle is most likely going to somehow be involved with your investigation. Um, so the process of conducting a vehicle exam uh, is very time consuming and that's something to keep in mind because they're considered mini crime scenes, right? So they can take just as much time as an actual scene investigation and um, a lot of new investigators, uh, sometimes detectives who have not been uh, part of these exams I don't really realize that when they get involved. So um, the other week I had a vehicle exam that lasted about eight hours. I was doing a lot of different forensic examinations on it. Um, it was involved in a shooting, so I was doing some bullet trajectory analysis and um, processing it for latent prints and swabbing it for biological evidence and pretty much um, just doing all the forensic activities that I could on it. So even though they're small, they're still crime scenes and uh, they need to be thoroughly documented so it can take a lot of time. Uh, the key to photographing vehicle examinations is really the same key that you should always have in your mind when you're documenting items that might be of evidentiary value. And that's that you need to be thorough, right? No matter what evidence you're looking at, whether it's out in a field or inside a house or in the trunk of a car, it needs to be thoroughly documented because what do we use the photographs for? We use them to show to the jury, to explain what we saw, we create fair and accurate representations of the scene, but we also use them to help us write reports and to do diagrams. So remember, your photographs have a lot of different uses, so you want to take as many as you need to be sure that you really capture all characteristics of the evidence, including where it's located. And that's very important important in vehicle exams. So let's begin. Okay, the, the, let's start with the first rule. You want to set up a sequence that you, so that you don't forget shots. Now it really doesn't matter. You can start at the back of the vehicle or at the front of the vehicle. Remember we talked about this for accident photography, but you want to remain consistent. Okay, so I like to start my vehicle exams from the back of the vehicle. So this is my car. She's uh, my new baby, <laughs> my Chrysler 300. So as we work through this, you're going to realize that this car is probably uh, a lot cleaner than any car you would see on a crime scene. Um, that's because this is my new favorite toy. <laughs> so I understand that um, you know most of the times when you're dealing with vehicle exams, it's not going to be in a pristine condition. So this is going to look a little bit different, but um, because it is so new, uh, you guys should be able to see the actual shots that, that I want you to see uh, relatively easily. So. So start at the back of the vehicle, start at the front of the vehicle, wherever you want to start, but just make sure that you start in the same place each time. Um, that will keep you from forgetting some key shots. So here's a shot of the back of the vehicle. The next shot that I like to go into is a close-up of the license plate. Um, this one is always important. Even though you got the information most likely from your um, the rear shot of the vehicle, sometimes, uh, especially late at night or if you're using an external flash, sometimes that uh, license plate will get blown out and you won't realize it. So if you miss the important information of the license plate on your overall um, rear vehicle shot, this is going to make sure that you uh, don't lose that key evidence. So we always take one overall of the rear and then we take another close-up shot of the license plate. So as you work your way around the vehicle, you can move clockwise or counterclockwise, it really doesn't matter, but like I said, try to get into the habit of doing it the same way each time, okay? So we're moving around to the passenger side of the vehicle now. And notice how I'm overlapping my shots, right? In that last shot that you saw, you saw you know, the rear um, passenger side uh, fender, 
or a quarter panel. And now you, you also saw the rear passenger door. So I'm overlapping them just to show the viewer the direction that I'm moving around the vehicle. So I'm always thinking of orienting my viewer as to what part of the vehicle I'm looking at. And here we are up to the front fender on the passenger side. Okay, space can be an issue if you're working in tight spaces like a vehicle bay. Um, our vehicle bays have uh, lifts in them and a bunch of different equipment, so sometimes it's hard to work around the vehicle and get uh, far enough away from the vehicle to capture the whole area that you want. So just remember, you're a moving, thinking crime scene investigator. You're not stuck in one position. Okay, so you can move to any space that you want uh, to make sure that you can get the full documentation that you need. So here I'm standing up on a little ledge to let me get the front of the vehicle because the front of the vehicle is relatively close to the back of the garage. And a couple more shots, just making sure that I really thoroughly document that front of the vehicle. Don't forget the hood. Um, sometimes coming up over the top of the hood like I have in this shot will give you um, evidentiary shots that you might miss if you're just focusing on the front of the vehicle. So remember, all the surfaces are important and you want to show all of the details of that surface especially if you're working with an accident scene. Um, a lot of the times you want to be sure to show areas aren't damaged as well as the ones that are. So you're documenting a lack of evidence as well. Okay, That's very important for vehicle exams. Remember to photograph all the areas even if there's nothing necessarily of evidentiary value there. Okay, if lighting is an issue, remember to expose for the evidence. Okay, so in this shot, because I've got a lot of sunlight coming in through the back of the garage, the camera had a little bit of a hard time figuring out what to photograph, right? Or what to expose for. Um, this is a classic backlit shot. And so the first shot that, if I hadn't been thinking about this, if I just taken on auto, it would most likely expose for that background area, the outside street and the trees and everything back there. But because I know that this is an element for backlit photography, I exposed for the windshield, which is what I was interested in. So I made sure that the flash fired for the windshield. I forced it to, to fire. I took it off of auto flash. And now my background is overexposed, right? There's a lot of white back there. But for this shot, I don't really care because that's not the evidence that I'm, fo that I'm focused on, right? As long as the evidence that I am concerned with is exposed appropriately, then I consider that a good shot. So this uh, shot of the windshield is great because it shows that there's no damage to it, no cracks, no chips, things like that. OK, so we're rotating around the vehicle and the exterior needs to be thoroughly documented. So if the tires are of consequence, you can definitely zoom in and take those shots that I showed you for um, accident uh, scene documentation. But another thing that you can do is consider using lifts um, if your department has the ability for it. Uh, my partner and I have worked several scenes where vehicles were actually used as um, the weapon <laughs> for homicides. So sometimes you're going to find trace evidence or biological evidence on tires and uh, vehicle lifts are really a great tool to have. So if you have those as an option, obviously you want to make sure that you can uh, operate them safely. But um, those are a great option to have if you want to be able to get up underneath the vehicle to be able to search it for possible trace evidence. So here we are. We're just moving along down the driver's side of the vehicle. Now we're starting to have some issues with the, uh, the light on the back end of the vehicle, right? It's starting to get overexposed there. So be sure that you move around and change your position so that you completely document the exterior of the vehicle. Okay, so every surface of the vehicle that could contain possible evidence has to be photographed, right? So that's all of them. You want to remember to do your door interiors. This is something that I see crime scene specialists forget a lot um, because they're focused on the actual body of the car. 
but your door interiors can be very important as well. Not only are they great places to look for fingerprints, um, because when people wipe down a vehicle, they tend to forget the little interior edge of their door, um, but this is a good place to look for biological evidence as well. And remember, you can take as many shots as you need to thoroughly document each section of the vehicle. Okay, here are some key elements to remember for your interiors, okay? You definitely want your instrument panels, especially if it's an accident-involved vehicle. Um, the speedometer, sometimes um, if it is in a high-speed collision, what will happen is the force of that collision will force the needle of the speedometer to slap against either um, the dial itself or the glass of the dial or the plastic of the dial, and you'll actually be able to see um, a needle indicator slap to show how fast the vehicle was going when it impacted um, another object, so that's very important. Okay, the floorboards are also extremely important. So you want to make sure that you photograph each of the floorboards, the driver's side, the front passenger side, and the rear floorboards. Not only are those good places to look for evidence, but there could be possible trace material there as well, uh, bloody shoe prints. So those are areas that you really need to focus on. The seats. You definitely want to get your close-ups of each of the seats, and you want to be sure that you do both cushions, so the lower cushion and then the lumbar cushion. Um, you want to be sure that you're documenting, even if there's nothing there, even if there is no you know, um, blood transfer or bullet holes, you want to show a lack of that evidence as well, right? So these are just the the key elements to remember for interior photographs. So if I was just starting off as a crime scene photographer for vehicle exam, um, I would create a list uh, of these key areas so that I knew I was hitting each of them as I worked through the exam. Headliners. Headliners are an extremely important um, area to photograph, especially if there's any kind of um, injury going on inside the vehicle. So if someone is shot inside the vehicle, the headliner is an area that you really need to focus on because a lot of the times um, blood spatter will reach the liners of the vehicle. And again, if it's not there, you also want to document that. What I like to do is, for my headliner shot, I like to start at the driver's seat. Um, as you saw, that's where I usually start my interior shots. So I like to do the headliner shots from the driver's side and focus all the way into the back with each shot. But you can take them from wherever you, you need to. And if while you're doing this, you notice that, oh, here's some um, blood spatter over in the you know back passenger seat area, you can move around and you can take um, mid-range shots from wherever you like. But I just like to take the headliner shots from the driver's seat, mainly because that's the start of my interior shots. And I tend to not forget it when I do it from that location. Okay, so now let's talk about um, a review for some of you, and some of this that some of you guys might have, this, this might be a little bit new for. Um, you have your overall shots of the interior of the vehicle, that's what you're working for. But when it comes to evidence shots, you have basically three or to four shots that need to be taken. You have your overall, so this would be considered either an overall, an overall of the center console area of the vehicle, but it's also a mid-range of the evidence, right? That water bottle. Let's consider that water bottle evidence. So this mid-range shot is showing the evidences, the evidence location to other parts of the vehicle. So from this shot, you can tell where it is in relationship to the two front seats. You can tell it where it is in relationship to the gear shift and the stereo, all of that. So this is a good mid-range shot because we know exactly where in the vehicle this bottle is located. Okay, and then you want to do a close-up of your evidence so that your viewer knows, hey, this is what I'm focusing on. So this is a good close-up shot. It doesn't fill the frame completely, but it is the appropriate uh, shape, right, because that bottle is more vertical than it is horizontal, so that's how the camera's held. So this is a good close-up shot of the evidence to show the viewers this is, this is what we're focusing on. 
It's completely acceptable to include your evidence shots while you're documenting the overall interior, but guys, remember not to forget what you're doing, okay? It, sometimes, I'll see this a lot with um, new crime scene investigators, they'll start their interior shots, they're getting their documentation down, and then they notice a piece of evidence and they go, oh, okay, I, I gotta do my mid-range shots, and I gotta do close-up shots, and that's fine, but don't forget what you're doing. Right? All the surfaces and compartments of the vehicle need to be photographed as is before we can go through and search the vehicle for evidence. So that's another uh, key element that I usually remind my detectives of. Um, when my detectives are with me on a vehicle exam and they want to get in there and start searching for things, they can, but I pretty much uh, make them stand in the little corner <laughs> until I've completely documented the vehicle as is. Because if there's evidence in there, I want to show exactly where we found it before a detective pulls it out and shows it to me and says, hey, did you photograph this yet? <laughs> okay, that's a problem. So just be sure that you're getting all of your surfaces and all of the items documented documented inside the vehicle before anything is moved, okay? The center console area or the um, armrest area is always a good place to look. Um, a lot of the times evidence can be stashed in there if the uh, criminal is trying to hide it quickly. Now in this shot you'll see the only thing I did was I flipped up that little coin sorter uh, shelf and that's fine. If you're going to move things as you photograph, that's okay as long as you have photographed it as it was before you altered it. Okay, so with this sequence of shots, we know exactly what it looked like before anything was moved. Um, so these are good overall in situ or as is shots. As you move through your interiors, guys, remember to reorient your viewer, okay? So when you move to a new uh, seat area or a new location in the vehicle, just make sure that you show the viewer um, where you're moving to. So this is a good shot because it shows the viewer that we've now moved away from the front compartment of the vehicle and we're moving to the driver's side back end area. So what you're going to do is you're, con con you're going to continue through the vehicle and make sure that all the seats and all of the doors are documented. So I'm not going to show you guys the entire vehicle, um, but what you're going to do is go to each of the four doors and do exactly what you did for the front. So you want to make sure that you photograph the interiors of the windows, interiors of the doors, the floorboards, the seats, um, every, every surface of the vehicle. So you're going to do that at each of the vehicle's doors, however many doors the vehicle has. Okay. So here are the key areas to remember. The trunk, okay, that is a very, very important area to check for evidence. Um, I'm not going to say which agency it was, but there was an agency in Arizona not too long ago um, where a police officer towed a car for it being parked illegally for several weeks. It was in the tow yard for quite some time uh, and it started to smell very bad and they popped the trunk and lo and behold there was a dead body in there. <laughs> okay, so do not forget to look in the trunk um, no matter what type of investigation you're doing. Remember, you want to document if there is evidence there, but you also want to document evidence if there isn't. And this is just another interior shot of the trunk to make sure that we can actually see um, that, there's, that there's nothing inside there. Okay, map pockets. Remember we talked about these places where uh, hidden tricky evidence can be located. And this is a shot basically just to show I'm looking in the map pocket and there's nothing there. Okay, so you can kind of consider these photographs as uh, visual notes for you, right? Because in a couple years from now, especially if you work for a big agency like I do, there's no way you're going to remember every single element of every vehicle exam that you're going to do. I've probably done over I don't know, 30 this year, and um, these these photographs help me as um, as much as my notes do sometimes. So uh, because I consider myself a photographer, um, I tend to take notes with my images a lot more than I actually write physical notes on a crime scene. My partner uh, yells at me about that all the time, but um, that's the way that I make sure that I'm documenting everything. So sometimes you can use a shot like this to remind yourself, yes, I did check this back pocket, we did look at it, and there was nothing there. Okay. 
the glove box. The glove box is really important. Even if there's no evidence in the glove box, that's where you're going to find your vehicle documentation. And if a vehicle is important enough to be examined uh, like this, forensically examined, you obviously are going to want to know who the vehicle is who's, who it's registered to. Um, so this is a really uh, important key piece of documentation to remember. And of course, the VIN, right? You guys thought I forgot, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, so you know you can you can take the VIN shot whenever you want. A lot of times, um, I I know that crime scene investigators will do uh, the rear shot of the car, the license plate, and the VIN all together in those three, just so that they um, can get those shots out of the way first, so that they don't forget. Um, but wherever it fits in your process is fine. Just make sure that you don't forget it. Um, there are a couple different places to look for the VIN. Sometimes uh, criminals will try to remove the VIN from the vehicle. So if they've removed it from the uh, windshield area, you can look um, on the side driver's door. Um, sometimes there's a sticker there. It's also in a bunch of different hidden areas in the vehicle. Um, the engine block, uh, I think it's on a, a couple of the um, the chassis segments. I'm not really sure about that, but um, vehicle crime guys, uh, especially like stolen vehicle detectives, know where all those little hidden areas are. So if you can't find it in the locations that you know it to be in, um, check with your department and uh, somebody should be able to help you find the hidden ones. Okay, so now that we've thoroughly documented the exterior and the interior of the vehicle, we're going to go on to our evidence shots, okay? And the evidence shots that you're going to take for a vehicle exam are pretty much the same evidence shots that you're going to take for any kind of crime scene documentation. And we're going to review those um, in a different setting in, in a couple weeks. So, um, But these evidence shots are very important no matter what uh, scene you're working on. So. We already took our overalls and our mid-ranges and our close-ups without changing anything to the scene, uh, without adding anything to the scene, right? So the next sequence of shots is going to be the mid-range with the placard to orient the viewer. So in this shot, we're back looking in the front passenger section of the vehicle, and we're focusing in on the, uh, on the water bottle that we shot to begin with. And you'll see that I've added one of these little paper placards to it. And you can print these out. These are available in doc sharing for you. Um, so this is a good mid-range shot because it's showing the viewer what we're focusing on, right? That's what we use our placards for. We use our placards to highlight pieces of evidence in the shot so the viewer knows what to look for. And this shows us that we're looking at item number one. And it shows the location of the bottle in relationship to the surrounding parts of the vehicle, right? So this is a good mid-range shot. And here is a good close-up with the placard. Now, if you were using actual uh, plastic placards, um, figure out which side is the front. Usually, the front side of the placard will have a little scale attached to it. Um, what we do in Phoenix is we make sure that we always orient the placards pointing to the front of the vehicle. And we also, on other scenes, make sure that the placards are oriented to the north if we're photographing something in a house or outside or something like that. Um, the reason that we do that is because in shots like this, the close-up shots, you can still orient yourself to vehicle, right? Even if you didn't know uh, if, even if you didn't take that mid-range shot before or any of your overall shots, you would know just from this shot that this is most likely in the center console and you know that to the left of this shot is the front of the vehicle because that's how I've oriented my placard. So that's something that you can adopt. Um, most agencies have little protocols like that so that you can always orient yourself looking at photographs. Okay, this next shot is an altered background to show additional details. So it's obvious that we've moved the evidence now, right? Because it's now lying on a completely different background than it was before. Um, you don't need to keep the whole placard in your shot. You can fill the frame as much as you want. I like to keep a little part of the placard just to show that we're still looking at item number one here. So we use these shots to show additional detail that you might not have been able to see from your close-up shots with the evidence in situ or where it was found originally. 
So for your individual work this week, um, you're going to be documenting your vehicle or the vehicle of a friend if you don't have one um, as if you were conducting a vehicle examination. So be sure to keep a list of the shots that you need um, so that you can check them off as you go. And when you put your final submission together, if you want to put it into a PowerPoint, that's fantastic. That's a really easy way to compress your photographs and um, keep everything together in one easy area for me to look at. Um, but remember to compress your images. So if you're going to submit a file with a whole bunch of images in it, be sure that you save them um, with low resolution so that you don't have to wait forever as you upload them to the Dropbox. Okay, as always guys, I'm here if you have any questions. So uh, email me if you need any further help. Okay, see you in the classroom.